Back in the past, when crude oil was cheap, it was not uncommon to see a large gasoline engine powering a large truck anywhere in the world. GMC developed a series of big block six cylinders for industrial applications, and on a second thought, a 12 cylinder was the right out of them too. Big and beefy, this 1500 pound heavy gas guzzler was meant to haul 120,000 pounds in gross rating without breaking a sweat for hundreds of thousands of miles. The story of one of the last gasoline semi truck engines is really quite interesting. <laughs> A heavy-duty petrol V12 had not been anything unseen back then, as Seagrave and American La France were two popular manufacturers making such 12-cylinder petrol burners for decades ever since the 1930s. In 1959, GMC launched an all-new truck engine series, starting at a 5-litre 305. The big block V6 range all the way up to a 254 horsepower 7.8 liter as a 478, which was powerful enough to shame the larger 215 horsepower 8.6 liter La France. Clearly, the new GMC unit was a modern engine with high potential, and they aimed to unleash its full potential. Even though GMC has been a part of Chevrolet, this series was a pure clean sheet GMC design. It has nothing to do with any Chevy engine, and that's evident in many design features of the V6. Besides the sheer size of the block, it was a cast iron strengthened piece using four main bearings. Pistons adopted three inch long skirts, a forged crankshaft was placed into the 351 and 401, and the cooling and oil system were both made as powerful as possible. Longevity and serviceability were the two major factors during its development. Last but not least, the V6 was made to run at diesel-like low RPM to lower the heat and prolong the lifespan of the engine. The GMC V6 was simply made for any vehicle, that is commonly referred to as a truck, but it did not end there. Engineers showed the hidden potential simply by doubling up the cylinder number. All hailed the mighty 26702. Offered from 1960 to 1965, the new 12 cylinder used much of the engineering architecture of the V6 portfolio. The goal was to make an easily serviceable powerhouse that can do tasks the V6 could not. In the core, there is a new V12 block casting that accommodates seven four bolt main bearings. Alongside a crankshaft and camshaft, these three elements are unique to the V12. Other stuff is off the shelf items. There are four V6 heads held by 56 head bolts four exhaust manifolds and twin carburetors on twin intake manifolds. There is only a single distributor drive, but it runs twin separate distributor caps. As a 702 cubic inch engine, it basically is twin 351s in a single unit. An unusual engineering detail is the spar plugs in the valley sides and hydraulic lifters straight from a 1953 Cadillac Bel Air. It even had the firing order stamped onto the intake plenum. Since it was meant to be the most heavy duty of them all, GMC was not taking any shortcuts here. The cast iron block was made as stiff as possible. The forged single piece crankshaft weighed over 80 kilograms and the pistons housed four piston rings to ensure perfect sealing. The valve train was made out of the most quality materials, cam lobes spun in an oil bath and its short sock design was meant to lower piston speed at peak power RPM. Not to forget that it had so much torque at the very low RPM that it would not need to downshift as often. The V6 has a reputation as an indestructible engine, and the V12 design truly outlines engineering determination to make this engine able to run tirelessly day and night without breaking a sweat.
A standard output of the 702 was about 275 horsepower at 2400 RPM in gross rating, meaning without accessories and running no air filter, which equals about 250 horsepower in net rating. It had nearly 800 Nm of torque at just 1600 to 1900 RPM. The GMC Twin 6 had been used in trucks such as the GMC 7000 and 9000 series straight and cab overs, but also as irrigation pumps. It is known to actually last 400 to 500,000 miles with minor service. They finished the production in 1965, but then made a couple more in 1966 for a Canadian trucking company. People driving or working closely with this engine mention that the V12 can be safely turned up to 4000 RPM. That would raise its power significantly, and that's what Thunder V12 does with their units, squeezing 425 horsepower at 4200 RPM out of them. The speed governor is oil operated and requires an oil pen dropout to tune it. Fire trucks had a higher rev range of up to 3000 RPM, making about 300 horsepower and 630 pound feet. 850 Nm. The sheer torque of the Twin 6 is not to be neglected, as it also liked to break rear axles and supposedly would outpull an 8V71 Detroit. It would also take up to 55 liters of gasoline every 100 km or equivalent of 4 miles per gallon. Interestingly, some companies used the Twin 6 simply to move trailers around a yard, which was much more convenient, with a cab over in tight spaces and as a petrol burner during winters. The effort put into the 702 development was huge. It had the highest quality materials everywhere inside. The three thermostat cooling system was designed to keep the hot spots to the minimum with a 4 degree difference between the coolest and hottest places and the water pump was incredibly powerful at a flow rate of 454 liters per minute. With a capacity of 68 liters, the coolant would run the engine 6.5 times every minute. The oil filter itself contained up to 2 liters of oil and the lubrication system flew at 64 liters per minute. Besides, there was even an experimental 956 Twin 6 made in a handful of examples for military and fire businesses, but the project was eventually cancelled. The 702 itself was made in a number of a few thousand, and possibly less than 200 of them are still around. It is a popular hot rod engine project, but a pricey one, with close to zero aftermarket support. However, Servicing should be okay, as about 56 major parts are shared with the GMC V6. Keep in mind that you need two engine stands to hold it outside the car. The end of production of the Twin 6 possibly brought the end to the largest petrol truck engine and let turbo diesels perform where they excel. As soon as its production was stopped, it was replaced by a 637 V8, which is the largest displacement production gasoline V8 ever made for highway trucks. Despite its enormous appetite for gas, it is one of the best engines ever built in the USA.